I think psychology, like psychologically for a fighter, it's hard to come back from a knockout. But it's probably harder to come back from a fight where you've been dominated and broken for five rounds, like where mm. you clearly know that you did not belong there with the, right. you know, like, 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 right. for example, like Khabib's, that's his style. That's why I'm saying he's the scariest guy. It's time to talk about the main representative of mixed martial arts from Dagestan. About the pioneer and wrestling popularizer on the global scene. About one of the most famous fighters of our time and a real nightmare for all lightweights of the world's best league. Comfortable friends, you are about to hear about Habib Nurmagomedov himself and his full story. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with forwards and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. childhood and early years. Habib Abdulmanapovic Nurmagomedov was born in Ava family on September the 20th of 1998 in the village of Sildi in Sumadinsky district of the Dagestan ASSR within the Russian SFSR Soviet Union. From the dawn of time, the destiny of all men in the Nurmagomedov family was closely entwined with sports. Habib's father, Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov, was the Sambo and Judo champion of Ukraine, the champion of Europe, master of sports of Ukraine and one of the best coaches in the world in terms of MMA and aforementioned disciplines. His uncle on the father's side, Nurmagomed Nurmagomedov, was the sports sambo champion of the world and his uncle on his mother's side, a titled master of sports in free wrestling. As it is often the case with many children in Dagestan, the boy began to conceive the basics of wrestling from an early age. Nurmagomedov Jr. got introduced to the sport, hard work and competitive spirit almost from the cradle. Here are my childhood memories about the father. There always was a regiment. There were certain rules. Workouts were always combined with education. It's always been that way. Every single day I had to train and study. Despite the discipline in the educational institution and within the walls of the gym, Habib often got into situations where he had to stand up for himself or his close ones. One, one, one time my cousin fight in the street. All right. He lose and I go fight. I said, now you need to fight with me. 14 years. I you were 14? Yes, 14 or 15. And I fight with him and I beat this guy and he say, okay, his brother now fight with me. Oh, he brought his brother? Yes. Okay. But this guy think I'm tired. I tired? Said, this guy think okay. I'm tired. I fight maybe four or five minutes with him. Finish him choke and after he say, hey, now you need to fight with me. Was the brother already there or did he have to go get him? Yes. Okay, he come. I finish him too. Yeah. I choke him. Apart from regular activities with his peers, in those times, the Dagestani boy practiced wrestling not only with people, but also with real bears. There is footage on the internet where a nine-year-old Nurmagomedov Jr. apprehends the basics of wrestling competing with a specially trained bear. 
This is wrestling bears. Uh huh. Wrestling like, bears. Like uh, this, this happened in zoo. Uh huh. Um, it's like circus, circus bear. Mm -hmm. You know, like he, he can wrestling. These guys teach him wrestling. Oh. Okay. He take me down two time. You were nine. Yes, <laughs> but I take him down too. It's a very close match. I don't. I think. <laughs> I think I. I win split decision. <laughs> In 2001, the whole family of Nurmagomedov moved to Makhachkala, the capital of Dagestan. At a new place, the boy began to train even harder and considered other sports disciplines. Besides wrestling, Habib was also interested in boxing, judo and of course MMA in the form of combat sambo. From the age of 12 to 15, I trained free wrestling with Saida Hamed Yukujayevich. Then I transitioned to Judo, I started doing it here with Jafar Jafarovic, an honoured master of sports in Judo, and after that I moved to my father and began to train in combat sambo, and at the same time competed in mixed martial arts. Amateur career and the father's plan. Why does he have to be somewhere after 12? One might say it's a personality. What life? Who do you belong to? Either you commit to the sport or you go to work like people do. Everybody has to work. Initially, Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov was focusing on training his older son. By the age of 16, Magomed was in the national team of Dagestan in free wrestling and had a huge potential. A 14-year-old Habib did his best to keep up with his brother. As he received permission from his father to systematically participate in training camps with adults, soon the guy put his prospects and skills on a new level. Already by 16, Habib began to show impressive results, becoming the top three best combat sambo artists of Russia. On top of that, Nurmagomedov Sr. intentionally put his son to compete in different wrestling tournaments where he lost on a regular basis, which was not a surprise. That's how young Habib developed an aversion to losing and evolved in terms of self-perfection. And here's how a former champion remembers those times in an interview to the local media. Habib, father, you always did everything the right way. Now I hate losing. I was fed up with that in my childhood. That's why I always win. There was never any pampering for Habib Nurmagomedov from his father. There were even cases where the guy reached the finale of various competitions where he faced other students of Nurmagomedov Sr. Abdomena preferred to stay on the sidelines and watch the match from the stands. One of the famous politicians of the Dagestan Republic and also the author of the Habib Time book, Zor Kurbanov, said this. Zor, I once asked him that question. Abdulmana, is Habib more of a son to you or an athlete? He took some time to think, raised his eyes and said, you know, if I looked at him as a son, not only wouldn't he be able to hold the opponent down on the ground for five minutes, but he also couldn't do it for 15 seconds. I had to repress fatherhood within myself in the gym so he could become a good athlete. I saw the desire in him and couldn't betray him even for the sake of father's love. I have to push him as much, if not more than I do everyone else. In the same way, there could be no question of doubts about the proposed methods of work, or even his own opinion within the walls of the training room, Abdulmanab Nurmagomedov. Some people might not find my coaching style suitable. I'm a bit of a dictator in my approach. I don't understand when a 15, 16 year old kid disagrees with a 55 year old experienced coach and says, maybe this is better. Can you imagine that? I usually say at times like this, show him the exit if he doesn't agree. People come here for advice on how to do things better. If I give advice, point out some mistakes and correct them. You need to do it like this. And when he grows up, 15 years from now, we'll sit down and look at the advice that he proposed to me and we'll think about it, if of course we're still alive. And so, when a young man comes to the gym, even if he's the countryman's champion, he has no right to say what's better and disagree with me. On one hand, such strict measures were always keeping the younger guy under control and almost never gave him a room for personal freedom. 
but on the other, the methods based on discipline brought Nurmagomedov Jr. to remarkable achievements. During his years of amateur career, Habib became the two-time combat sambo champion of the world, champion of Europe in hand-to-hand -hand combat, champion of Europe in pancreation and champion of the world in grappling. But all of that might not have happened. At 19, Habib wanted to exchange his sports career for a job in a security agency. However, his father talked him out of that. Abdulmanab, if you work somewhere, you are not an athlete anymore. It means that you have a different job. If you are an athlete, you have to live by that. You have to wake up early and go train. Come back home, eat and sleep. Everything you need will be provided by me. You only need money for water and transport. We have food at home. Professional career. In the year of 2008, with just one week before turning 20, Habib Nurmagomedov had his professional debut in mixed martial arts. His first opponent in the new sport was the Azerbaijani Vusal Bayramov. Their fight took place at the local league called CFU Champions League. At the beginning, it was a stand up fight. The Degastani decided to let his opponent work on the feet and was not in a hurry to go for a takedown. Bayramov was very restrained and hesitated to attack, resorting to only occasional low kicks. Soon, Young Eagle figured it out and decided to take the fight to the lower level. The fighter from Azerbaijan did his best to oppose the skills of his opponent, but in vain. Nurmagomedov comfortably took the mount position and began to utilize ground and pound. Then Habib switched his focus to a potential submission attempt. He did not wait for too long and performed the triangle a few moments later. The end came rather quickly. Very soon, Vusal Bayramov went out cold and became the first victim in the perfect resume of Habib Nurmagomedov. <laughs> After less than a month, the beginner fighter won his first and last bracket tournament, Pancration Atrium Cup of Russia, beating three different opponents in one night. The first one was Magomed Magomedov. The first round started with an active pressure from Habib, properly switching between the levels and total control over the tide of the fight. The next five minutes took off at an even higher pace. The fight even had to be paused a couple of times as the guides did not shy away from brawling, due to which Magomedov needed medical aid. In the end, Habib Nurmagomedov won by unanimous decision and earned his spot in the tournament bracket. His next victim on the same day happened to be a fighter called Ramazan Kurban Ismailov. In the first fight, the future Dagestani champion continued to demonstrate a remarkable level of skills and his main attributes. Young Eagle made a special impression to his constant pressure both in the stand-up and on the ground. Nurmagomedov controlled his opponent in every aspect for two five-minute rounds and confidently moved further in the tournament bracket. In the finale, the Dagestani faced Shamil Abdul Karimov. 
The third fight was a little more competitive for Nurmagomedov than the previous two. But even despite a worthy opposition, Habib drilled wrestling skills happened to be better than the abilities offered by Abdul Karimov. The Dagestani managed to outwork a tough fighter and become the first winner of the Atrium Cup tournament. The next appearance of the beginner fighter in the octagon took place on March the 8th of 2009. Back then, the Eagle was up against Elder Eldorov in the new promotion called Sumata Fighting Championship. Unfortunately, the footage of this fight is not present on the internet. However, it's known that Nurmagomedov won via TKO already in the first round. On the same day, young Habib fought with another athlete, Saeed Ahmed. The fight started rather unexpectedly with a takedown attempt from the Eagle. His opponent immediately tried to catch his younger vis-a-vis -vis into a guillotine. Nurmagomedov spent some time waiting out for the opportunity. When it was time to act, he almost automatically advanced to a full mount and barraged Sayed Ahmed with a merciless finish. In the end, the athlete couldn't offer anything against an onslaught and lost via the same TKO in the first round. Three months later, young Dagestani debuted in a rather popular fighting league called M1. He shared the ring with a future title contender in Bellator, Shabulat Shamhalaev. Interesting fact, at the time, the Eagle competed in the welterweight class and he made a final transition to 155 pounds only after arriving in the world's best league. At first, Nurmagomedov took a waiting out approach. He began to work as a second number to turn up in a proper moment and utilize a preset game plan. After spending some time in the clinch at the corner, the fight went to the ground. Eagle started to feel a lot more confident in the common realm. For a couple of minutes, he kept Shamhalayev tensed up, constantly threatening him with submission attempts. Based on how lost the fighter felt on the ground with Habib, his surrender was only a matter of time. And soon, that is exactly what happened. Closer to the end of the first round, the young talent took his opponent's hand and snatched his seventh professional win by an armbar. After that, Habib Nurmagomedov met with Ali Bagov at Golden Fist, Russia on June 10th of 2010. The fighters were given only two rounds to fight and the time to work on the ground was limited. But even these bounds did not stop Nurmagomedov with an absolute control over the tide of the fight. He superseded Ali Bagov in every aspect, showed a difference in skills and successfully extended his win streak to eight in a row. On September the 18th, the Dagestani with an impressive record made his return to M1. His next opponent happened to be the Belarusian Vitaly Ostrovsky. The fight was held at Selection Ukraine 2010 tournament Clash of the Titans. After just half a minute into the fight, Nurmagomedov shot for the legs of Ostrovsky. The latter decided to capitalize on the opportunity and grab the Dagestani's neck in an attempt to execute a guillotine. Habib, as always, waited it out and soon got to a dominant position. This time, the Eagle wanted to find a victory from the back mount. When he figured that the retaliatory submission in the form of an armbar was not going to work, the solution popped in his head on its own. He simply smashed the opponent using the crucifix. Tut 
Островский терпит такие удары. And when the fighter from Belarus refused to continue, earned the ninth consecutive victory. Already in the beginning of February 2011, Habib Nurmagomedov shared the ring with the Ukrainian fighter Alexander Agafanov. That fight took place in the finale of Selection Ukraine 2010 event. Agafanov tried to defend from the very first takedown of Habib with a sprawl. Nurmagomedov denied these actions and ultimately took the Ukrainian to the ground. For some time, he successfully controlled the opponent in his realm and only with one minute left in the round, the referee decided to put the fighters up. Agafanov hesitated to go for anything, so in the very end of the round, he missed another takedown. The next five minutes started with active work in the clinch. A minute later, the Degestani fighter dropped the opponent through the ropes and the referee had to step in once again. Another clinch soon resulted in the same thing but this time on the opposite side of the ring. When the fighters collided for the third time and Nurmagomedov tried to press Agafonov into the corner, he fell out of the ring another time. The Ukrainian tried to go for the takedown himself, but quickly regretted it and once again crossed the bounds of the ring. This time the referee restarted the fight on the ground from the very center. That was the end of the round, with a total control and a beatdown from Habib. Alexander Agofanov refused to go out for the third round. That's how Habib Nurmagomedov scored his 10th anniversary win in his professional career. Beginning from April of 2011, the Degestani beast began to compete in the Pro FC League. He signed a new contract for more than five fights and his appearance within New Walls took place at the Union National Cup 14 tournament. The next opponent of this rising prospect was Saeed Khalilov. In this fight, Nurmagomedov started to work as a second number again. Prior to the main action, he threw a couple of low kicks and checked the reaction of the pressuring opponent. Khalilov successfully stuffed the first takedown and continued to move forward. Young Habib did not get discouraged and waited some time out. Already in the middle of the round, the eagle managed to shoot for Said's legs and hold him on the ground. At first, Nurmagomedov leveled his opponent up a little bit and then roughly dropped him on the canvas. After which he immediately began to aggressively beat him up. After that, surprisingly, Khalilov managed to get up, however, not for too long. Then the Degestani fighter switched his focus to the opponent's left hand and snatched the victory via Kimura in the first round. After less than a month, Habib Nurmagomedov came out to fight another opponent. The next in line was Ashot Shaginyan. Their fight took place in the same Pro FC, but this time at Union Nation Cup 15. In this case, the Degestani beast showed the whole world his striking technique. Even for those years, he looked rather good and managed to confuse his opponent and make him jump for the legs from a ton of eaten strikes. Habib successfully stopped all takedown attempts and came back. Asha did everything he could to avoid the damage, however, his every move only made the situation worse. Soon, Nurmagomedov once again caught his opponent's chin with a left hand and sent him straight to the corner. From there, he needed only one shot to win via clean knockout in his 12th professional fight. Two months later, the undefeated prospect performed at Pro FC Union National Cup Finals. He shared the ring with the fighter from Rostov Nadonu, Kazik Abajan, who had a record of one win and one loss. The Eagle took the center of the ring from the very first seconds. When he tried to attack, got immediately caught with a counter from his opponent. After that, the Degestani decided to avoid risk and shoot for the legs. Athlete spent some time on the ground under Nurmagomedov's control. When the referee put them back up, 
There were only a few moments before the next takedown attempt, and the referee had to interfere once again. In the third time, Habib managed to repeat an early success and hold Abadjan on the lower level. In the end, the latter couldn't make it out of the deep waters. At first, his hand got severely damaged from a tight armbar. And then a no less tight triangle ultimately forced the Russian to tap and earn Habib Nurmagomedov another stoppage win. On August the 5th, the unstoppable Degestani faced another fighter from Azerbaijan, Kamiz Mamedov. That fight was held at Pro FC 30, Battle of Don. The Azerbaijani fighter pressed Habib to the corner from the get-go and attacked with a couple of sharp strikes. Nurmagomedov decided to return the favour and answered with a clean left hook. Then he threw a couple of low kicks. Mamedov tried to catch the opponent a couple more times but soon figured that it's not that easy and entered the clinch. The Eagle gladly accepted that and after a while took Mamadov down. Not too far away from them was Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov who quickly began to give his son good advice. The Azerbaijani heard that and exploded sharply. He managed to get back to his feet and drag Habib close to the center of the ring. But this idea also did not give him any dividends. Nurmagomedov dropped in with an amplitude throw and took the top position from where he began to search for the stoppage. And a few moments later, he found it. In some sense, he repeated the same thing he did to the previous opponent. At first, he executed an armbar and then smoothly transitioned to a triangle. There was no escape from Mamadov from that position. <laughs> He tapped and gifted Habib Nurmagomedov his 14th consecutive victory in the professional career. Forty days later, the Dagestani finisher came out to fight the Ukrainian Vadim Sandulski. It was the Eagles' fifth fight inside Pro FC and the tournament was called GM Fight Ukraine Cup 3. Vadim missed the very first takedown. It seemed like Nurmagomedov did not want to waste any time and began to look for the victory by all means necessary. After a bit of fussing on the ground and changing of a couple of positions, the Dagestani found a way. He decided to stick to traditions and perform the third triangle in a row. The fighter from Ukraine surrendered almost immediately. 15-0 and the young eagle moves on. A month later, Nurmagomedov competed in Pro FC for the last time. He shared the canvas with the Brazilian veteran Arimacel Santos at the Battle of the Caucasus Tournament. By the way, at that time Santos had a record of 48 fights, 28 of which he won. Athletes showed each other respect and the fight started. The Brazilian rushed forward and began to batter the lead leg of the Dagestani fighter. Then he decided to take Nurmagomedov down by shooting for the double leg, but the attempt wasn't quite successful. The referee put fighters on hold and stripped one point from Habib for grabbing the rope. When the fight resumed, the Eagle was in a hurry to make up for the lost time and knocked Santos out with a left. Then he spent some time beating him up on the ground, where he eventually finished the job after a spectacular ground and pound. Sixteen to zero in total, and the new Dagestani star once again put himself on full display. Shabby! UFC debut. Salam everyone, I got an idea to do vlogs. Right now it's 7am, we are headed to the mountains. 
to Taki Tao. We will be running upwards three kilometers. Then we go to the gym, work on the striking technique. That's how we prepare for the UFC. As history taught us, the year of 2011 happened to be the most active one in the entire career of Nurmagomedov. He earned seven victories, but he had to move further. The overall record of 16 wins and no losses drew the attention of representatives of the major league. Habib signed the contract with the UFC already in the middle of November, becoming the first fighter from Dagestan to break into the main promotion and began to wait for his debut bout. Right now we are waiting for a visa. They told us like somewhere around the 25th, 30th, it will be ready before the new year and as soon as we get it, we fly out. The first opponent of the Dagestani beast in the upper league happened to be the Iranian Kamal Shalrus. The guy shared the octagon on January the 20th of 2012. No problem. Unbelievable. Like, when are we going to Russia? No, this kid's impressive. You're going to Russia? Nah, not soon. It won't be soon, but we're working on it. Prior to the fight, Habib Nurmagomedov attended the weigh-ins in his signature papaha and unintentionally set a whole new trend. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. They gave me t-shirts, I barely arrived and they gave me a new iPod. A lot of stuff like, let me win first, you know? Our room is on the 19th floor. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, here's where we fight, Bridgestone Arena. 20,000 seats, no problem. We're going to conquer that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, guys, train. <laughs> the debut fight of Nurmagomedov went in the best possible way. He forced his will on a more experienced opponent from the very beginning and impressed everybody with his level of skills. Already at the second minute of the third round, Young Eagle found a finish via submission choke and successfully broke into the UFC. All right, Habib, how are you doing? What does it feel like? Not bad, brother, great. Had a fight yesterday. My hand still hurts a little bit. Left one. I was landing, it seems. All good. Alhamdulillah. We're on the road right now. We know how to welcome people in Caucasus. They know how to do it here as well. Sam's good close friend, he is going to give us a lift to New Jersey on his private jet. <laughs> like in fairy tales, you know. After the first successful experience and a transition to a new level, the young eagle came to the gym situated in San Jose called Aka that produced many world champions and elite representatives of mixed martial arts. Namely, from 2012, Habib started training at the new place in collaboration with Javier Mendez. That's how Daniel Cormier remembers the first time he met the eagle. I remember when he first came to AK, he had his phone, right? Barely spoke English, and he would play me this audio of Bruce Buffer introduced him in his UFC <laughs> debut. And it would say, the Eagle of Dagestan, because that was his name before. It wasn't just the Eagle. It was the Eagle of Dagestan. And we would listen to it every day in the gym. And he would tell me, DC, one day I'm going to be undefeated, undisputed champion, and I'm going to make loads of money. And we would say, oh, you're out of your mind. Yeah. And he did all those things. The next appearance of Nurmagomedov in the Octagon took place on July the 7th at UFC 148, headlined by Anderson Silva and Chael Sonnen. His opponent happened to be a powerful Brazilian lightweight, Gleison Tibau. This fight is a hot topic for discussion till this day, because on that fight, the Brazilian gave possibly the most competitive fight for the rising athlete. Only an unshakable will to win, courageous heart and tough character helped Nurmagomedov to get the win by unanimous decision. Every day after every prayer, I asked the Almighty to give me that victory. And when it came to me, I got a little bit emotional. I assumed that I won because I knew that in the UFC, they evaluate constant pressure. And because I always pressed him to the fence, went after him and showed that I want to fight, while he was backing up and didn't want to exchange, that's why this fight happened to be very boring. 
He is very strong physically and I want that thank like congratulate him. Because even though it's a loss for him, it's still a great experience. The third fight of the fast rising Dagestani took place on January the 19th of 2013. In the main card at UFC on FX7, Habib Nurmagomedov faced another Brazilian athlete, Thiago Tavares. During the weigh-ins, the eagle got people's attention by wearing a renowned t-shirt that said, if samba was easy, it would be called jiu-jitsu. I was told that they put up more security for me because during the weigh-ins, I went a little bit over the top with the t-shirt. Me and my friend Elder thought about it for quite a while. Like, for sure, besides the fight itself, there should be an element of the show. Honestly, we spent a long time thinking of what to do for the weigh-ins, how to dress, and actually, we didn't think about that line at all. Elder saw a guy wearing a t-shirt that said something like, if judo was easy, it would be called football. And then he told me he saw a guy with such a t-shirt and said like, let's write, if Sambo was easy, it would be called Jiu Jitsu. I told him like, I have to go out there. You tripping? They are going to throw bananas at me and they are free there. Elder joked that imagine I walk out with that t-shirt on and then he submits me in the first round. <laughs> I tell him like, don't tempt fate. But we knew that there would be some bustle and talks, all of that. But we still went for it. The young talent got done with Thiago Alves inside two minutes, or more so via spectacular TKO. At first, Nurmagomedov knocked the Brazilian fighter down from the lunge and then brutally smashed him with devastating elbows till the referee stopped the fight. Already back then, Habib was called the Eagle on the national television of Dagestan Republic that showed the news about him during the broadcast. Habib Nurmagomedov, nicknamed the Eagle in St. Paulo at UFC FX7 tournament, earned a stoppage victory over the Brazilian Thiago Tavares. Nurmagomedov knocked his opponent out in the very first round, and for the 24-year-old Dagestani, this win happened to be the third one out of three fights in the world's biggest MMA organization. The next appearance of the undefeated prospect took place on May the 25th of 2013. His opponent at the 160th event was the American killer, Abel Trujillo. During the preparation for this fight, Eagle slightly miscalculated the time to properly cut weight. So at the weigh-ins, he went out and showed 158.5 pounds on the scale instead of 155. But the most interesting stuff was ahead. When the fighters stood during the stare down, they aggressively clashed with their heads and the Dagestani pushed his opponent. That incident that already made a lot of noise was overshadowed by an even bigger headline because of this fight. Nurmagomedov set the world record for the most takedowns. He took Abel Trujillo to the ground 21 times. On top of that, with such a performance, Habib showed the American fighter the difference in the level of their skills and once again vividly proved why he is an undefeated athlete at such a young age. And during the post-fight interview, Nurmagomedov exposed some of the details of the conflict and told why he was so harsh at the weigh-ins. First of all, it's a professional sport and everybody has flaws and everybody makes mistakes and I miscalculated a bit and missed my weight. Sometimes I go up to 198 and I began to cut from 189. I missed two pounds. I was done and agreed that they would take 20% of the purse. First of all, I grew up in a place where respect comes first, and I'm always respectful towards every athlete, whether it's my opponent or not. Before the weigh-ins, I came up to him and apologized that I didn't make weight, and offered him my hand. He didn't respond to that. Where I grew up, it's very disrespectful to not respond when you offer your hand. And when I walked out, I was already angry. He pressed his head against mine, and I pushed him. In his fifth fight inside the world's best league, having a perfect record of 20 wins and no losses, Habib Nurmagomedov shared the octagon with another American athlete, Pat Healy. Their bout was held on September the 21st at UFC 165. Salam, hi everybody, to the group called You're a Wrestler, right? Crusher? I am a wrestler myself and decided to make this video for you. 
Go train, guys. There is nothing easy. You see yourself. I almost cut 18 to 20 pounds. 13 more to go. All good. You have to sweat, work and suffer. The results don't come for nothing. Yes, I know that he is a good fighter. He is in the top 10 best lightweights of the world. But I have other plans. He is exactly the same as I am. Messed up many plans of other fighters. And it will be a good fight. You will see my plan in the actual fight. I have a lot of surprises for him. The future world champion dismantled Pat Healy in a convincing fashion as always. He left him almost no chances in every given round. That win happened to be the 21st in Habib's career and the 5th one in a row inside the UFC. My opponent was in the top 10 best fighters of the world and uh, I think I need to rewatch the fight. I think I was a little bit messy in the stand-up because in the beginning I got a bit confused until I went in. Overall I think it's okay. But I need to sit down with my father and watch our, um, my fight and analyze it. Here's the thing I love about this kid. This kid comes out and goes for it, man. He went in there against a bigger, stronger dude. I mean, if you look at how big Healy is for that weight division, he's huge. And uh, he was getting hit with some big shots tonight. He can wrestle, he can punch, he's got good punching power too. Even against a bigger, stronger guy, he was hurting him in that fight. And then that slam, when he just scoops him up and slams him, you know, Matt Hughes style. That reminded me of the old Matt Hughes where he would run a guy across the octagon and slam him. Kid's exciting, he's talented, and uh, t I think tonight he, he showed everybody what he's got. I, I, we're probably going to do big things with this kid. I love this kid. In December, Nurmagomedov challenged Gilbert Melendez on social media and then it was supposed that they would face each other at UFC 170 on February the 22nd of 2014. However, the fight had to be cancelled for undisclosed reasons and the American was replaced with Nate Diaz. At least that's what the matchmakers were planning to do. But unfortunately, this bout also did not come to fruition as the Stocktonian decided to reject it. Nurmagomedov expressed his disappointment during his appearance at the MMA Hour. Habib, if they say that they are ready to fight the best, they have to fight the best. If they want to, I will grab them both straight to the cage. As a result, only by the end of the spring it was clear what's next for the Degestani Eagle. The fight between Habib Nurmagomedov and Rafael Dos Anjos was targeted for April of 2014. Hello. I am Habib Nurmagomedov, I am a UFC fighter, I am from Russia, Dagestan. My next fight, 19 April in Orlando, UFC on Fox 11. My opponent, Rafael Dos Anjos. Let's go fight. When two future champions collided in the cage, it immediately became clear that everything was in favor of a younger Dagestani beast. Habib Nurmagomedov had another dominant performance and established himself in the lightweight division even stronger. The opponent was ranked number 5 in the UFC and I think that I had a really great performance. I'm happy with this fight and you know, the entire top 10 of the lightweight division will have a hard time against me if they don't learn how to wrestle. Rough Patch After the 6th win in a row inside the world's best league and 22nd in the overall record, undefeated Habib Nurmagomedov got a prime Donald Cerrone as his next opponent. At that moment, Cowboy was on a 4 fight winning streak and got different bonuses for every one of his performances. Initially, it was planned that their fight would take place on September the 27th of 2014. The win over Donald Cerrone would have helped the Degestani reach a new level in terms of media exposure and fame in the United States. However, everything got messed up by the main enemy of all athletes and especially fighters, cruciate ligaments. 
Abdulmanap. We have a basketball court, 38 to 18. Habib ran, turned 360. The leg went out, bang, like a snapped cable. The leg got swollen instantly. We called the ambulance, sent him to Moscow. Tear of cruciate ligaments, out for eight months. What did Habib lose after the injury? A decent skill in football. He could kick the ball mid-air with both legs and had a beautiful juggle. In terms of wrestling, he lost an essential shot for the side leg. After a while, he began rehabilitation and gradual return to training. The Degestani Eagle was planning to come back as soon as possible and did not shy away from making statements about the current champion in Anthony Pettis. Uh, one guy say questions him, uh, what think about Habib? I don't know, but I think he no one did this fight. He's scared, I think. Why do you think he's scared? Because uh, before he no one said about me nothing. But I am 6-0 and, and number one contender, 22-0. And, and you know, my opponent is scared. Showtime, scared. As it became clear a little bit later, Habib Nurmagomedov would try to meet with Cowboy another time. The second attempt to organize the fight between the Eagle and Donald Cerrone was planned for May of 2015 at the 187th event. Everything was almost done. However, the Degastani pulled out of the fight on April the 30th due to another knee injury and was replaced by John McDessey. Well, you know, he was sparring, he had great sparring and uh, you know, no contact was actually made. He had to step back. As he stepped back, his knee kind of went out on him, you know. And is it the same 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 injury? It's the same knee. And the thing of it is, when he came to training, he was, I would say, about ninety percent. So we were trying to work around the injury, the the surgery, not the injury, because it wasn't injured. We were trying to work around the surgery, and uh, you know, it just it didn't hold. Half a year later, the media was expecting that Habib Nurmagomedov would face Tony Ferguson on December the 11th of 2015. But this fight was not meant to happen. The Eagle injured his rib and couldn't make it to the octagon. Words from Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov. Who broke Habib's rib? Islam Makachev. Trained in the gym, I was nearby. Habib was evading on the ground. Islam was attacking. At that moment, nobody knew that they were the best fighters in the world. They were going at full speed, even with anger. One doesn't let go, the other holds. Suddenly, the sound of a crunch, like a broken dry branch. When Nurmagomedov healed his injury, he got Tony Ferguson as his next opponent once again. Another fight between them was targeted for April the 16th of 2016. Moreover, it was planned that the fighters would headline UFC on Fox 19. This guy just needs his first loss. It don't matter what the Twitter beef or whatever's going on, whatever he can say. More! More! I love it! Bring it! This guy's gonna get his first loss. That's all I know, and it's gonna become not by decision. He's gonna we'll get finished. See. He's gonna get finished. We'll see. Dude, you have no conditioning. You're flat-footed, you have no rhythm, and you're one-dimensional. You get hurt by your team, man. We're going to be surprised if you make it blah, to the Blah, weight. blah, 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 blah. No BS. Just get there, all right? Just get there. You know, this is very hard for me. I don't fight two years. Now I'm very exciting. I know for fans, very interesting how I come back. But for me, it's too. And that's why I ask UFC, give me toughest opponent. UFC say, we have Tony Ferguson, seven win streak. And I said, let's go, let's do this. But 10 days before the fight, it was the American of Mexican descent who reported about the health issues. A liquid and blood was found in his lungs. Luckily for Habib, Ferguson was replaced with the debutante, Daryl Horcher. He called me, I don't understand why. He pulled out, he had to shut up now. But he talked too much, oh, uh, I asked him like May, June, something like this. But I training for this fight for months. I cannot wait two more months because I have a lot of upset fans. I have to come back with somebody. And Tony cannot speak about me because when I'm injured, I stay be quiet. You understand? UFC give him some Barbosa, I am injured. I don't ask him, hey, please, waiting for me because this is stupid. This is stupid. You know, when you pull out, you have to stay shut up. 
briefly speaking, Daryl Horch's debut in the world's best league was not very successful. Hungry for the wins and angry, Habib Nurmagomedov ran over the rookie like a truck and stopped him via TKO already in the second round. I feel like uh, last two years I sit down in the jail. I said this after fight. Now I'm free. Now, uh, now I am ready for the title, and uh, I'm happy about my comeback. I'm very excited when I go to the cage. You know, uh, I'm very happy now. Already in September, the Dagestani beast signed two contracts for a title fight against the current UFC lightweight champion, Eddie Alvarez. That fight was supposed to happen at the 205th event. However, on September the 26th, the promotion announced that the American would defend his title against Conor McGregor. Eagle expressed his discontent on social media, calling Alvarez a shitty champion for rejecting the fight and choosing the notorious Irishman as his opponent, and accused the UFC itself for putting on a freak show. In the end, on November the 12th, he shared the octagon with Michael Johnson at the aforementioned tournament. I, I hope I hope you're very happy to see me. I hope I am very happy to see you. Eddie Alvarez and Conor McGregor, you promote this fight. UFC sent me two contracts and you never talk about this. Why? I you know why? Why? The answer is, as you know, you were used as a pawn in that game and you know that's the truth. And I said that to you, and I said that to your management team, that you were okay, being how, used. How you know, how you know this if, if UFC never do this before? How you know this? You work with UFC, UFC block you. There's a guy by the name, there's a guy by the name of Frankie no, no, no. Edgar over there who could tell you a bit about his block you, right? No, they didn't. No, you don't work with UFC no more, folks, right? Yeah, I don't work for them, right? Oh, how you know this? Because I've been around this uh, sport for a long time, and they do this okay, to get guys think, to have leverage okay. as a negotiation ploy. Look at Frankie Edgar over there. He's been waiting to fight Conor McGregor for two years, okay. and he hasn't done so. So oh, I knew but, what was but, going but, but on. But don't send him contract. The less time it was till the upcoming tournament, the more the atmosphere heated up around this fight. The fury of Nurmagomedov was evident, and it was understandable. He was sent two contracts for a title opportunity and after some time it was taken from him and the championship fight was given to the media showman in the face of McGregor. Prior to the ceremonial weigh-ins, already tired of systematic injustice and injuries, the Degestani faced the Irishman backstage. He and the notorious one exchanged a couple of words and looked straight into his eyes. Habib said that he will smash his face in the future. You should say after this fight, I, I'm gonna fight for the title. I think uh, I think I deserve this, but about what happened, this is up to main event. Because if Conor win, of course he no take this fight. And if Alvarez win, I hope he take this fight and we fight with him. And at last, that tournament happened. Nurmagomedov putting his unbeaten record on the line against Michael Johnson. Here we go! Good. You do yeah. good? Okay. You can't, we're gonna smash your boy. Let's, yes, of let's, course. Let's focus it's on what we're gonna do here. Okay, let's we focus know, on what we're gonna do. I know who I am. I know the At UFC 205, Nurmagomedov demonstrated one of the best performances of his career. He beat Michael Johnson up, showed his trump card in the form of mid-fight talking and even exchanged a couple of words with Dana White. And the fight ended already in the middle of the third round by submission. That guy is on a completely different level compared to everybody else. 
Hey guys, Irish only 6 million, Russian 150 million. I want to fight for your chicken because this is number one easy fight in lightweight division. Yeah, I need to talk with him. What'd you it's tell not good. Well, no, what did you tell him? I talk about, uh, I tell him, hey, I have to fight for the title, you know this. I tell him, I, I, I don't want to smash your face. And I, I already beat you. Like, you have to give up. He keep fighting. Did he say anything bad? No, he not say nothing. He he keep fighting back. Like, give me a couple time. Like, punch me. I will, I wanna give him respect because he call me out. He take this fight, and I give him very hard. Like, Fifteen punch. I think a lot of people after this finish, but he keep fighting. I talk with Dana between every rounds. <coughs> I talk with him, I say, hey, don't send me no more your fake contract. I need real contract. He talk about, oh, hey, you have to finish this fight. I say, you know already I deserve this. You have to send after this fight real contract. I say, okay, let's go finish this. After I finish fight, I talk about. The Conor McGregor, there was an apparent backstage altercation. What exactly happened? I, I saw video how he look with uh, Tyron Wood the morning and after my way in when I go he watched me I say what <laughs> maybe he think I'm Tyron Wood or Eddie Alvarez I'm different you know I'm living in the street where I'm from this is different this is not about like camera here or not camera here this is not about this this is about different for me it's all my life I fighting I, I have a lot of fight in the street I know when I come to professional, I start this because I can hurt somebody. But I have big experience. He watching like me, like for me, it's like like nothing. Can. It's okay. Thanks, but I think very soon, very soon. After the win over Michael Johnson, that happened to be the eighth in a row inside the world's best league and 24th in the overall record, the Degastani Eagle was supposed to fight Tony Ferguson on a third attempt. That fight was planned on March the 4th of 2017 at UFC 209. The interim lightweight championship was at stake. Of course, I excited about this fight, you know, because I fight for the title with a tough opponent, you know, around the world, a lot of people are gonna watch this fight because this is truly a high level fight in lightweight division one of the greatest i think greatest matchup in lightweight division and that's why of course i am very exciting but same same time i am enjoy about this because i'm here like two days before weighing three days before fight my weight is good my shape is good and I, this is what i want all my life you know couple days before my dream has come true of course i enjoy 100% I think this is real championship fight. I, do, I, I don't care about him. You guys know his uncle Dana gave him gift. He jumped over with all contenders and he fight for the title, you know, like... I don't understand this fight. He, 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 he catch him a couple times, he go down at the Alvarez. You know, this fight, I, for me, is fake fight. And uh, I don't think about him. Hey, I have, we have real fight now. This is like people main event, you know. This is one of the biggest fights 2017. Everything was almost set up. The time was inexorably moving towards the targeted tournament. The fighters began to cut weight. In these pictures, you clearly see a dry and strain like a string, Habib Nurmagomedov, who can't wait to enter the octagon to conquer the desired championship and finally fight Tony Ferguson. However, literally one day prior to the fight, the Degestani was hospitalized due to dehydration. But it didn't stop there. On top of the health issues, after a while, it was found that Habib has another severe injury, a crack in his spine. Words of his father, Abdulmanab. We found that out a week before the fight with Tony Ferguson, he felt discomfort even prior to the dehydration. Then he suddenly says that he can't reach his leg with the right hand. Everything is okay with the left one, but when he reaches with the right, acute pain. These were the first symptoms, then it got worse, as it became evident, a crack in the spine. When he was reaching out with his right hand, he was opening up. 
Another wave of severe injuries and unexpected circumstances for a certain period of time even pushed Nurmagomedov to consider retiring. But father talked him out of that. Return and Ascension For a period of time, at least till the middle of 2017, there was almost nothing heard about the Degestani beast. No news, no talks. But luckily, the eagle managed to overcome all the obstacles that were in his way to the coveted gold. And UFC announced that on December the 30th, at the 219th event, Nurmagomedov will face the Brazilian Edson Barbosa. Sure, the fight was not for the title because in October, El Kukui shared the octagon with Kevin Lee and conquered the interim belt of the world's best league. And McGregor was still the rightful owner of the undisputed title. But based on Habib's undefeated record, it was already clear that the title fight was not far away. This fight is a, a real contender fight. And uh, he is nah, he is top five. I'm top five, you know. And uh, after this fight, I want to fight for the title when I beat, beat him, inshallah. And this this year, I want to finish. And New Year, I want to come like number one contender. I, I talked with you. So I talked with Dana. Dana told me you have to make weight, beat this guy, if you want to fight for the title. And I agree with him. And the tournament finally took place. Not only did Habib Nurmagomedov absolutely destroy Edson Barbosa, he ran over the helpless Brazilian like a merciless tank. And what's more impressive is that despite a blatant disdain from the company towards his persona, chain of bad luck and circumstances which pushed him back every single time, he still took time to focus on Dana White and talk to him during the fight. I'm here three months. Without my family. When you have wife pregnant, he cry one and a half year. Oh, my wife pregnant. But I'm coming here like man. Because I try to stay busy. But without injury, I can smash your all life. You're going to be legendary for you and your talks with him. After a second, I tell him, but 50,000, you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I want to say thank you for God. God is number one. Other things is nothing. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Today I was like my my son is born. I, I say congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. I hope you guys understand my English. And thank you so much. Well, 25 and all. You know, without in the injury, I can't fight with anybody. Now, if you have to give me one hour rest. I can fight one more time with Conor or Tony. That no problem. Uh, before fight, uh, I talk with Javier Mendez. Javier say you you have to focus on fight. You smiling. You relaxing. Let let's let's focus on fight. But I tell I told him, I'm focused, coach. Don't worry. I'm just I want to enjoy with this time because last time I fight November one year ago, and I want a little bit enjoy. Together with the Dagestani's win over the Brazilian, it seemed like the situation in the lightweight division got settled down. And the further deal was rather clear. After McGregor's temporal transition to boxing and absence of any news about the division's future, as we said earlier, Tony Ferguson was holding the interim championship. UFC matchmakers did not wait for the Irishman's return and attempted to organize the fight between Habib Nurmagomedov and the Mexican El Cucuy for the fourth time. On April the 7th of 2018, in the main event of the UFC 223, they were supposed to identify the new undisputed lightweight champion. I think it's gonna be happen. I hope. You know, but when I pull out, everybody talk about this, but you guys remember why I fight with that uh, Porcher? Because he pull out. He pull out too, you know, like I pull out, he pull out. Now is we're going to fight for real belt, you know, 10 win streak versus 25 win streak. Let's go. 
As the tournament was getting closer, everybody tried to believe that this time the fight between the two best lightweights of their time would finally come to fruition. However, as history taught us, this cursed fight failed to happen once again. On April the 1st, it became known that during an interview, Ferguson stumbled on the cable and tore his cruciate ligaments. But that wasn't the end of insanity. For all this time, this web that has been weaving around the Degestani and the notorious Irishman since the moment of their meeting at the backstage of UFC 205 was overgrowing with new events that we will talk about in more detail. The biggest conflict in the history of mixed martial arts has actually started with an interview of McGregor's former friend, Artem Lobov, dating back to December of 2017. Does Connor hear any comments that Habib makes about him? Like, he tapped like chicken and stuff like that? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Connor fought Mendes on one leg. 12 weeks before the fight, he tore his knee ligament again. Connor accepted that fight. He went out there and won. While Habib pulls out for the sixth time. A little pain in his butt or elsewhere, he pulls out. He can't even make weight. He doesn't care about the fans that came to see him from Russia. How much time it takes just to get a visa. People spent money, flew over to see him, and he didn't come out. And not one time, not two, three or four times. And who is the chicken here? Who is scared? Connor goes out every time, no matter what. He is a true fighter. He is a true champion. Have you ever seen Connor pull out of the fight? Injuries and other issues with weight cutting happen to everybody. But one is the champion and comes out no matter what. And the other is a chicken and pulls out every time. Then happened those events that we already told you about. UFC 223 was getting closer. As he met Lobov in the hotel's corridor, Nurmagomedov took the given opportunity and forced the Russian hammer to answer for his words towards him. By the way, at that moment it was already April the 4th. It had been three days since Tony Ferguson pulled out of the championship fight. Blessed Max Holloway agreed to replace him. No interim champ, when this fight is over, champion. One of these guys will be the champion. Period. You be the best, you gotta beat the best, and the best is blessed, baby. Let's go. We saw a video yesterday, a confrontation in the hotel with Artem Lobov. Can you... Can you, uh, can you kind of tell us you know, what happened there? What, what, what happened in that video? What's going on uh, back at the hotel? Nothing. Nothing happened. You know, first of all, I want to say thank you for Max. He take this fight. You know, like, like, if you guys remember, like in January in press conference, he talked about, hey, if somebody out, I'm going to take this fight. He the man. He take this fight. This is not about like Connor, he talk about I'm ready, stay ready, but when you call me, like no connect, nothing, they cannot call him because he understand, now he have to fight, now he have to fight, come, but he cannot make weight or something like this, but you know, like for Max, it's gonna be a long night, I respect him, you know, it's gonna be a long night, you know, because, because Max is gonna try to knock me out in front of my old people, my team, my friends, like or family. And you know, when cage close, when cage close, I'm gonna give him like hard 25 minutes. Thank you, inshallah. This press conference took place on April the 5th, less than three days prior to the tournament. However, a couple of hours later, this happens.
Connor assaults the bus with the Dagestani and his whole team. He stands up for his friend, but still goes over the top. Many people who were not associated with this conflict at all got injured and had to pull out of the upcoming fights. So obviously I don't have any canned statements or anything to say other than what happened here today is Connor and approximately 20 guys uh, apparently were let in through the doors by the MacLife guys who were uh, credentialed here. They opened the doors for them through an entrance. They stormed the building, got down to the, uh, to the uh, loading docks where the fighters were getting on the buses and started to attack um, the buses, throwing trash cans and uh, dollies and things like that. Broke one of the windows and cut Michael Chiesa really bad. Um, he, had glass, he cut his head, he cut his face. Um, Rose Namajunas apparently was almost hit. She's super upset right now and basically left and walked back to the hotel um, and uh, hurt one of our employees, broke one of our employees' knuckles and other injuries, uh, you know, and, and obviously everybody's shaken up when 30 thugs storm a, you know, these guys are all cutting weight and getting ready for a fight. This is the most disgusting thing that has ever happened in the history of, of the company. It is what it is. They just send me a message where I'm going to come. I'm going to come, just send me a message. Of course, they know a lot of security here, media. It's going to be big, you understand. They come with 30 people. Come here, send me a message, like location, location. I'm going to come. It seemed like the degree of madness was already through the roof. The event was on the brink of cancellation. On top of that, Max Holloway began to have issues with weight cutting. He was examined by the doctors who forbid him to continue the process. UFC began to look for a replacement for Habib Nurmagomedov's opponent at the very last moment. In the end, Al Iaquinta accepted the fight on an extremely short notice. Yeah, so as soon as we found out that, that, that Holloway didn't make weight, um, we, uh, and that he was medically unfit to, to continue to cut weight, you know, we started looking at the other guys on the card. Pettis, we jumped the gun too fast and said, you know, we were going to give Pettis the fight. Uh, Al Iaquinta and Felder were demanding the fight, going crazy, like wanted this fight badly. And I love that. And if you look at, you know, where Al is ranked and, uh, you know, his last five fights, he made the most sense. The problem with Al was he was 155.2 which is in fight, well, that was with his underwear on. The commission literally weighed his underwear and they were 0.2, so he made weight. Despite all the described circumstances and the most wild week before the tournament in recent times, Nurmagomedov finally got an opportunity to contest the championship. In the fight with Al Iaquinta, the Degastani beast showed the highest level of skills and undoubtedly conquered the lightweight belt in the UFC. Anu! On April the 8th of 2018, the Eagle officially became the first Russian who managed to win the championship of the world's best league. Khabib, the Eagle! Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov's reaction to Habib's win. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and First of all, I want to say Alhamdulillah. Without God, we cannot do nothing. Everything is nothing, you know. Number one, believe on your one God. And I'm very sad about, I'm all my team here without my father. This everything because of my father. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much, father. Coach Javier, come here, brother. Coach, please come here. Coach Javier, I come 2012 here. You know, he teach me a lot of things, you know. Mix my father and Javier is incredible mix for me. 
And you know, I want to say thank you for my opponent and his team. Yaquinta, Yaquinta is a real Brooklyn gangster. This is not about chicken. Yaquinta is a real gangster. He come here, where's Connor? He, he want to fight with Bass? I want to fight with real gangster. Today I'm scared a little bit, a uh, little bit, uh, you know, I can't believe this. Something happened, like everybody talk, now we're champion, you know. I need a little bit of time. Uh, yes, I have very long way, very long way, you know, like I'm trying all my life with my father. With my father, you know, like come here, sign contract last six years, more than six years I'm with the UFC. You know. Uh, I'm very happy about this, you know. Like you never know what's gonna happen tomorrow and you have to stay loyal all the time with your team, with your coaches, with your like with everybody who close with you. After the victory, Habib Nurmagomedov was planning to have a defense in the middle of autumn. The situation with Conor McGregor and other people attacking the bus was not forgotten. After a short trial, fine and assignment of community work hours, the main promotion took the situation under control. Considering a rich prehistory and enormous hype around these two, the big news about this fight getting put together was expected. The only thing that mattered was timing. And on August the 3rd, the UFC announced exciting news. Habib Nurmagomedov and Conor McGregor will, will share the octagon on October the 6th at UFC 229 with a lightweight championship at stake. You know, I can't believe we're gonna fight, you know, because I really want this guy. Make him humble, a little bit teach him, and, uh, and you know, not only smash, like change his face, you know, I wanna change his face. Of course, with change, with with face, I can change his mind too, you know, and uh, this is what I want. Really. As the biggest UFC tournament was getting closer, the atmosphere was getting more heated by the day. The Irishman wanted to get under Habib Nurmagomedov's skin and mentally break him, as he did with many fighters in the past. However, this time he went way over the top. I came back for the love of this, to come and shoot this man up. A little rat, a little weasel, a little hard man in groups, cowers away. And that's what you saw with that little shite on the bus over there. He shit his jocks after, after doing something to his own country man uh, that had nothing got to do with anything. Fanboy! The man was a fanboy. He bought t-shirts of mine. He f***ing supported the cause. You remember that? You little fanboy. You little fanboy b he bought t-shirts to support the cause, nothing but respect. And then, and then uh, uh, over on his neck of the woods, a man involved in something who was actually, who's now in prison, but Vladimir Putin locked him up for embezzling uh, 150 million worth of money from the Russian, Russian people, started to invest and pump money into his gym. So he started to grow in power, started, started to gain this false power and started thinking he was a little hard man, tough guy. Then she hit the farm with your man, he gets locked up and now there's not a being left. And now here I am to put the nail in the coffin. That's how it began. He was a fanboy, thought he was a little hard man after a while with some money like many people do. Money and numbers. Now the money's gone. The numbers are still there, but trust me, his, his own countrymen, his own people that he's, that he's turned his back on, they want to see him gone too. And I am going to do it in the name of the Russian people. Uh, I'm come here for smash this guy. Smash me, talk. mate! Smash I, me! I wanna, yeah, wanna, smash me! I can you say send your lo send location. Here it is, right here in front of you. I'm right in front of you. Did you not see me at the outside the bus? No. Did you not see me right in front of you outside the? F bus I showed you my hands no weapons the first thing I when I showed up at that bus I showed not my hands to let it know I come here unarmed no weapons step off the bus you talk the big game now I'm here he done nothing he sent and took a on that bus hid and, hid and cowered behind women and caused what happened to happen so that's that you tap four times. What are you bus. talking about? What are you talking about? You tap three. You tap three four times. You tap four times. So what? I'll tap your head off the like canvas, chicken. kid. You tap like chicken four times. I'll tap your head off the canvas. 
He's a glass jaw. The Chechens, the Chech my Chechen friends, the Vainaki soldiers, they told me that they have chicken jaws in Dagestan. And I believe them because I know a glass jaw when I see one. And I've seen this man wobble many times. I've seen his brother sparked unconscious in another promotion. I know he is afraid of a smack. And if you're afraid of a smack off me, a smack will feel like a double barrel shotgun. So I believe the inside the force. But I have been wrong before. I will be prepared for five rounds. You're looking at a fighting veteran. I've came through it all. I've been through it all. I've been on both sides of the world. I've been on the boxing side and I've been on this side. I'm ready for any occurrence. But this man is a glass jaw bomb. And I'm gonna shatter him like that glass was shattered. May God have mercy on its soul on October 6th. This is my third fight in last Shoy nine boy. month, you know, and 26 and all, never lose round. And I don't know what this guy talking about. I don't understand what he gonna do 6 October. He think whiskey gonna help him? I don't understand. <laughs> this time, Connor jumped over his own head. He did not shy away from making things personal. Insulted the family of the Degestani champion, his team, religion and father. On the contrary, Nurmagomedov was cold-bloodedly waiting for the tournament to take place. He wanted to make the Irishman answer for every word he said. Hey, first of all, I want to say Alhamdulillah, God give me everything. Alhamdulillah, I know you got this, you don't like this. Alhamdulillah, tomorrow night I'm gonna smash your boy guys. I'm gonna smash your boy and I want to say thank you all Irish fans, you know, all fans around the world. Because of you guys, this fight is happened. Thank you guys, and tomorrow night, inshallah, and still. All that tension went all out only in the very end. The fight itself happened to be mostly one-sided. The Eagle became the first fighter who managed to knock down the notorious Irishman. While Conor McGregor won one round, the end came in the fourth round after the Degestani pushed the pace and executed the neck crank. He beat McGregor and made him pay for every single word. The whole country, the whole Dagestan was celebrating the win of their countrymen at such a meaningful event. However, it wasn't the end. Right after the victory, Nurmagomedov focused his attention on one of the Irishman's teammates, Dylan Dennis, who kept on talking shit about him and his family. The true chaos began. The fighters team put on a brawl. The crowd was screaming and losing its mind. 
I'm with this bill. Here's what's going to happen. What's going to happen is, uh, this is what I believe. If I put this belt on you, everybody's going to start blowing <laughs> into the octagon. Not the high rate of Not other people might get hurt. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Sorry, okay. it's sorry. Right. In the middle of this thing when it was going on, I felt that I, I, I have to start worrying about the fans and people that are inside the arena, media, the guys that are, you know, that are there watching the fight. And I felt that if we put the belt on him in the middle of the octagon, it was going to rain. First of all, I want to say sorry to Athletic Commission, Nevada, sorry to Vegas. I know this is not my best side, you know, this is not my best side, you know, I'm human being. My father teach me, hey, you have to be always respectful. My old team, where I'm training California seven years, everybody know who I am. All my friends, like everybody who know me, they know who I am, you know. And uh, I told you guys, these guys, not only him, his whole team and him, they tap machines. You know, I told you guys, when you put him wrong way, he gonna tap, you know, what happened today? Okay, when I catch his neck and I choke him, like, <laughs> he, he tap, you know, it's like, and I think, hey, you bring like thousands of people from Ireland here on different part of world, and you tap in front of them, like, and you talk about like, about warrior or something like this, how you can tap, go sleep, go sleep. Like, and he tapped and I was like, okay, it's not enough. I need something, you know, and I was like, and I see like some his corners, like talk with me, like, and I think, oh, I have to bite his heart, you know. The aftermath of UFC 229 ultimately led to serious consequences. Habib got suspended from competing for nine months and fined $500,000. Moreover, it affected some of his team's representatives that participated in the mass fight. Connor went off with a six-month break and a fine of $50,000. On top of that, there was another scandal inside the UFC. Nurmagomedov was threatening to leave the organization if they would have fired his teammate Zubara Tuhugov. Luckily, all the disputes were settled peacefully. After the suspension was over, the undefeated Degestani Eagle, with a record of 27 wins in a row, had his second title defense against the interim champion in Dustin Poirier. His fight was targeted for September of 2019 at the 249th event. Last, are you guys remember this Timo Baharna last time, what I did here? Nothing changed. I'm gonna do this in Abu Dhabi too, defend my title, but without jumping. But uh, about uh, Dustin Poirier, Dustin is a tough guy. You know, he have more than 20 fights in UFC. He have good experience. And uh, honestly, like last fight, I expect Max gonna beat him. This one is a little bit surprise for me. He have good boxing, good footwork, but uh, last six fight, uh, he fight with only striking guys. He never fight with guy who all the time wrestling with him like my style. I think it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be tough night for him. This is my opinion because he have to be ready. I'm gonna wrestling with him all night, make him tired and make him tough. This is my plan. In fact, the fight with Dustin Poirier was not easy for the Eagle. The Diamond even managed to put Nurmagomedov in a dangerous spot a couple of times. However, his preparation was not enough to stop the Degestani's onslaught and it was all over in the third round by a submission. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Honestly, I don't know why, why I have so much everything in my life. Like, I don't know, maybe. Like, I want to say thank you so much, God, first of all. Then, I have father here. My father. I want to say thank you for my father. Come here, coach. I have my coach here, Javier Mendes. I have my brothers, everybody. Like, we born together, you know, like, grew up. Like, everything what I have, like, I have because of my team, my father, my sparring partners, brothers, Islam, Zuba, everybody here is like Abu Bakr, Uma. 
Everybody, if I forget somebody, sorry guys, my uncles. Subhanallah. Father's passing and sudden retirement. To continue our story, we need to make a couple of things clear. Initially, after suspension, Habib Nurmagomedov reached an agreement with the UFC and signed a new contract for multiple title defenses. After beating Dustin Poirier, the lightweight champion aimed at the new contender from the top five. As you remember, the Dagestani's next opponent was supposed to be his old enemy, Tony Ferguson. At that moment, the American of Mexican descent managed to recover from the tear of cruciate ligaments in a record-setting six months. He performed in the co-main event of the evening of the same UFC 229 tournament when Nurmagomedov faced McGregor. After a one-year layoff, El Kukui returned to the octagon and beat Donald Cerrone at UFC 238. The world's best league ventured to organize that fight for the fifth time. Tony Ferguson and Habib Nurmagomedov were supposed to share the cage on April the 18th in the main event of the 249th tournament. I'm actually going to spar this time. I haven't sparred since T-Bow. So, oh wait, hold on. You like beating on high school wrestlers? That are preparing for state? The week before? Hold on, hold on. And you like making homeless do push-ups in New York and making fun of them. I owe you two to the stomach and you owe me 20 push-ups, but I will do the push-ups with you. I think we have to fight to your legacy. I, uh, I think he's, uh, he deserves this, you know. He is real challenge, you know. I respect his skills, you know. But, you know, like, uh, like fighter, he's a very good fighter. But why people don't like him? Because he's a stupid guy. You know, that's why. Nobody understands him. I'm very know? educated, man. Like, honestly, like, he look like stupid, you know. That's why nobody like him. But, like, fighter is a very good fighter. That press conference appeared on the internet on March the 7th. There was a bit more than a month left before the event. Together with expectations, the stakes were as high as ever. Two top lightweights on 12-fight winning streaks were looking to contest the World Championship on a fifth attempt. It was an unprecedented case in the history of the sport. But as history taught us, this attempt was also unsuccessful because the pandemic suddenly interfered with the plans. As Nurmagomedov went back home prior to the tournament, he couldn't leave Russia due to flight restrictions. Being at AKA in St. Jose, we trained for 10 days not knowing if we were going to fight and where. What would be the condition? With the crowd or without? We had a lot of questions we had no answers to. The tournament happened, but in a slightly changed version. Nurmagomedov couldn't leave the country and defend the belt against Tony Ferguson. The date of the event was moved to May the 9th and in the main event of the evening, El Kukui shared the octagon with Justin Gaethje, who accepted the fight on short notice. Their bout would identify the new interim champion. As you might remember, the highlight stopped El Kukui in a brutal fashion, breaking all the possible plans for the fight between Habib and Tony in the future. Overall, the future of the division became clear. The organization had to wait a little bit more time before COVID restrictions loosened up. It was also taken into consideration that the Dagestani couldn't fight during Ramadan. However, the cancellation of the title fight was not the main tragedy for Habib in 2020. In the same spring, it became known that his father, Abdulmanab Nurmagomedov, is in a critical condition caused by the coronavirus. Right now, his condition is still critical. He is still in the reanimation. The COVID itself is in the past, but it led to consequences. The heart, the kidneys, and he is still in the hospital, in a severe condition in reanimation. The COVID is not a problem anymore, but there are other consequences. 
Two weeks later after this footage, Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov left this world. The news about his passing came on July the 3rd. The cause of an untimely death happened to be apoplexy caused by pneumonia due to the coronavirus. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. You know, we, we feel horrible for Khabib. We know how much he, he loves his father and how close they were. And, um, you know, just giving him time to, to mourn and heal and, and do whatever he needs to do. We're not bothering him at all right now. We're just leaving him alone. The whole fighting community, including those people that did not have especially warm feelings towards Nurmagomedov, expressed their genuine condolences and words of support to his family and close ones. That loss became the turning point in the life of the Dagestani champion. After some time passed, the world's best league announced a fight between the Eagle and Justin Gaethje. They were supposed to meet in the main event of the evening at UFC 254 on October the 24th of 2020. I don't understand when people ask me how difficult for you to train without fun. Of course this is difficult. I don't understand why you guys keep asking me this. This is very difficult. You know what I mean? Habib is, is looking down the barrel of, you know, not only the greatest to ever do it in, in this division, but He's, he's, look, I, I, listen, I think if he beats, if he beats Justin on Saturday, I, he, he's the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. And it happened. The undisputed champion stopped the highlight already in the second round by a triangle and extended his win streak to 29 and zero. After the fight, Nurmagomedov couldn't hold emotions back and announced his retirement from the professional sport. Alhamdulillah. First of all, I want to say Alhamdulillah. God give me everything. Thank you for these guys. These guys with me and with my father more than 20 years. All my team, okay, with Coach Hav, I love him so much. All my team. Oh, thank you. Today, I want to say this. It was my last fight, and no way I'm gonna come here without my father. It was first time when, after what happened with my father, when UFC called me about Justin, I talked with my father, with my mother, three days. She don't know I go fight without father, but I promise her it's gonna be my last fight. And if I give my word, I have to follow this. As history taught us, the Dagestani kept his promise and never returned to the octagon. On March the 19th of 2021, Dana White officially attested that information. Coaching and Promotional Business After some time after retirement, Habib Nurmagomedov focused on the other side of mixed martial arts. He followed the steps of his father and started coaching. He still has a lot of top fighters under his wing with whom the Eagle trained during his active career. He produced a couple of world champions in the best fighting leagues, the leading and very promising contenders and undefeated athletes like himself. Habib's resume as a coach is also impressive. He has more than 20 wins and two losses via decision, one unanimous and one split. Apart from that, the Dagestani launched his own promotion, Eagle FC, where many well-known and strong fighters compete till this day. Here's how Nurmagomedov's resume as a coach currently looks. It's safe to say that Habib looks more than impressive in his new role and that he is definitely a worthy successor of his father. In the summer of 2022, the Dagestani Beast was inducted in the UFC Hall of Fame. 
actually. The news about Habib being added to this list appeared already in the beginning of March when the promotion presented a video at one of the tournaments. And in July, the ceremony took place in Las Vegas. Nurmagomedov was given a special jacket with the UFC Hall of Fame patch and a signature statuette. I just want to say, first of all, uh, Alhamdulillah, thanks God, you know, because like I remember like 10 years ago, my mind was completely different. Oh, I'm going to become champion, I'm going to become rich, I'm going to buy everything. But ev like everything what happened last two years, uh, this has changed my mind and uh, changed uh, the way how I was thinking. You know, it was 3rd July 2020, two years ago, almost two years ago. After a couple of years, it's going to be two years, father is not with me. You know, it's very hard time right now staying here and talk, talk, talk about him. You know, it's very emotional for me. But... And... Uh, What else could be said? Perhaps your opinion might match with what many of us think, or maybe not. But either way, this man can be a role model to absolutely everybody. Habib Nurmagomedov embodies this famous line like nobody else. Hard work always pays off. And that's true. He worked very hard from childhood, trained to the limits and gave all of himself to the professional sport with right and loyal people around him, including his father, Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov, standing apart, the eagle reached the heights that he strived for his whole life. Like his father, he made a tremendous contribution in the development of mixed martial arts and even right now continues to do his thing, but without him, aloof from the octagon. He followed the steps of Nurmagomedov Sr. and accepted every challenge on his way with honor. This big man deserves a huge respect from all of us for everything he gave and continues to give to that sport. Leave your opinion in the comments below. What do you think about Habib Nurmagomedov and his perfect career? We really appreciate your opinion. And do you think the Degestani could continue competing at the same level if it wasn't for the tragic events that took place almost three years ago? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos. And of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. See you soon. Coach, don't joke with my father, coach. What's this, Udaid? Two setki. What's with this, Udaid? What's with this, Udaid? Setka, pass with it, Udaid. What's setki, Udaid? What's with this? Don't joke with my father. Coach, relax. I relax. I run away. I don't know, we talk about the father all the time. Father, coach, coach, father. Of course, father is the man that led me through this entire journey. Not an easy one, you know. He was always beside me, supported in every way. Father and a coach all in one. And now we speak Russian. Maybe I should say something to my mother. I might say that I love my mother more than I do my father. But let her not tell that to father. <laughs> I hope my father doesn't see that. Well, we have to love our mothers more than we do fathers. I think he would understand. We already had a discussion about that. I asked him, who do you love more? He said, mother, of course.